bromine solution added to sodium iodide. Now, bromine solution and iodide, bromine will be able to oxidize iodide. And then what happens is we get Br minus and iodide becomes iodine. So what happens is bromine will be reduced, iodide will be oxidized. We can check the oxidation state. Element 0 becomes minus 1, so oxidation state decreases, is reduced. Iodide minus 1 and then increases to 0. So bromine are reduced iodide ions are oxidized. Halogens exist as diatomic X2 and they are asking us to justify why the boiling point increase as we go down the group from chlorine all the way to iodine. So chlorine, bromine, iodine yeah, I'll just use chlorine versus iodine. Now, first of all, we must understand that they are nonpolar molecules. So, nonpolar, it means what they how they attract each other. The intermolecular attraction will be instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. And if you're comparing the instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces among molecules, what sets them apart will be the number of electrons that they have. Chlorine will have less electrons compared to bromine, compared to iodine. So the number of electrons, as they increase, the stronger will be the IDID, the higher will be the boiling point, melting point. What happens when P is treated with excess hot concentrated per, per manganate? So what happens when we have KMnO4 that's hot, if there is a double bond, right, what will happen will be the double bond will be broken. This is what we call oxidative cleaving. So if we break this double bond, we will have okay, something like an incomplete structure. Double bond broken. Now there will be changes to these ends also because of this strong oxidizing agent. This will become an acid. Okay, CH3, CO2, COOH. So will this end. Missing a two here. And do not forget that this N is an alcohol. All right, so an alcohol when it's oxidized will also become an acid. So CH two. This side becomes also a COOH. So don't just focus on the double bond here. Remember to check if there's any other groups that can be oxidized, like alcohols and all that. So we have acid acidic group and acidic group. Okay, that would give us option D. How many moles of hydrogen and bromine will be incorporated? Hydrogen will be added to this double bond 
hydrogen will also be added to this double bond so okay, H H H H so we have two moles four hydrogen atoms which comes from two moles of H2 bromine is the same as hydrogen they can be attached here one bromine two bromine three bromine four bromine and to have four bromine atoms we will need to have two moles of bromine um, bromine gas or bromine liquid so two moles of H2 two moles of Br2 When we hit this hydrocarbon, we might get a free radical. How many different forms of the radical are possible? So, what essentially we need to figure out is where can we where can we remove a hydrogen from the molecule, and we get where do we get unique structures? So, you can see that if we remove hydrogen from here or here or here right we'll get actually the same structure so it doesn't matter which one do we choose among these three okay we will end up with this structure down here okay it can be here here or here essentially they are the same if we were to remove the hydrogen from this carbon the unpaired electron will be found on this carbon instead and we'll get this radical finally if you're removing the hydrogen from this carbon the unpaired electron will be here we will end up with this radical so there are three possible unique radicals that we can find Sodium hydroxide reacting with 2 bromo 2 methylpropane by SN1 reaction. So, how should the first step be described? Well, I'll draw out the structure propane, there's a methyl group attached on the second carbon, and there's a bromine attached to the second carbon also so we have this structure okay. this is a tertiary halogen alkene so no surprises that it undergoes SN1 mechanism what it means is basically before we can replace this bromine the bond has to be broken first these two electrons will follow this bromine out and then we will get the rest of the molecule becoming positively charged so just a quick recap on the mechanism for SN1 reaction and we look at the options how should the first step be described we will have a curly arrow from the CBr bond to the Br atom that's how the bond is broken. 